This is China covered in pollution last year. But this year, the skies are clear. That's because the coronavirus epidemic had brought much of the country to a standstill for several weeks, causing a huge drop in pollutants like nitrogen dioxide, a harmful gas that's emitted when burning fossil fuel. Compared to previous years, it's below typical levels. If you close down factories or reduce the amount of cars on the road, you're going to reduce the pollution levels. And from that, we can deduce that the economic activity has been decreased. In early February, Chinese President Xi Jinping publicly declared a people's war against the virus, that extreme measures like shutdowns that prevented people from returning to work were necessary. But he also cautioned that those efforts should not jeopardize economic development. Now, a dramatic change in pollution over the country suggests that striking that balance could be difficult. In the past few decades, China has grown to become the world's largest coal consumer. Its large manufacturing-based economy burns 95% of the country's coal, making it the world's biggest emitter of greenhouse gases. Usually during the Lunar New Year, most industries wind down for a week and power plants burn a lot less coal. Coal consumption usually rebounds after the week-long break, which means pollution levels pick up too. Because the levels of nitrogen dioxide in China are so high, we can easily detect that from space. This is what Wuhan, the epicenter of the coronavirus, usually looks like after the holiday. The city is a key producer of automobiles, electronics, and heavy machinery. But this year, the demand for coal hasn't immediately rebounded since many workers have been stranded at home in lockdown cities. And nitrogen dioxide levels have dipped. It's not just Wuhan, it's the same when you look at other industrial powerhouses in China. This is what Shandong and Hebei usually look like after the holiday. They're known for churning out everything from textiles and metals to petrochemicals. But this year, they also weren't spared from the impact of the epidemic. While skies were clear in many parts of China, some cities like Beijing are still shrouded in smog. The city has recorded high levels of air pollutants. These fine particles are created during the chemical reaction of gases generated from burning fuel. Heating systems and Beijing's geography can affect this reading. But there's one huge source of pollution that can't be missed. Major steelmakers around the capital don't stop production during the holiday because going offline is costlier than running all year round. So during the city shutdown, some factories continue to produce steel. Li Hongmei is an analyst who tracks the Chinese metal industry. Because of the outbreak, you know, all the normal pattern has been broken. So the construction sites are still in the process of resuming work. That's why their steel consumption slowed down and delayed. Steel inventories are now at record high levels because buyers in the construction industry are demanding less right now. Home sales were already cooling before the virus. Now they're below last year levels. Whenever you're not so sure about your national economy, you're not so sure about your job security, about your income, people definitely will be reducing the expenditure in the investment. In recent days, she has been touting efforts to meet economic targets while containing the virus, like heavy stimulus to support banks and tax cuts for small businesses. But analysts say it's not clear whether these measures can help make up for lost ground. Some factories are slowly resuming production. The pollution levels that we're observing from space are beginning to increase, which may indicate that economic activity could be resuming Beijing recently put out the first full month of economic data after the virus hit China. The index tracks business sentiment among manufacturing and service sectors, and it falls below the lowest level recorded during the global financial crisis. An increase in the number of infections overseas could also put China's economy at greater risk, complicating efforts to meet Xi's economic goals for this year. For now, one of the most visible indicators to see how it all plays out might be just to look up at the skies.